Have you ever taken a family road trip before? Anybody? Any families? Maybe you you were a child and you got thrown into the station wagon and you had to go where your parents were, were taking you. Or maybe you were an adult and you took your kids. You got them all in the car and all strapped in. And questions started coming early on in the trip. Questions such as, where are we going? Right? Where are we going? Uh, when will we be there? And if you have teenagers... What are we going to do when we get there? And then the famous question, no matter the age, is, are we almost there yet? Which which I would always say to my kids, I would always add like four hours to the answer. It's like, yeah, about another eight hours. Oh, dad, dad. On Vision Sundays, as we start a brand new year, it's helpful for us as a church and the, the role that God has placed me in to answer some of those questions as we head into a brand new year. So that's what we're gonna do today. If you're uh, you know, new, new to this church, or maybe this is the first time, this is a great Sunday to be here. I probably picked a perfect Sunday so you can kind of see um, our heartbeat and kind of where we're going this year. But if you've been here for decades, this would be encouraging to you as well. Last year, I did something different. I said, this is the one word God gave me when I was on sabbatical, and one word that was more, you know, Ephesians 3.20. You know, ask God exceedingly and abundantly more than you can think or even imagine, and ask God for that. And so that was the challenge last year. And in, in my own life, I, I, we built something in our life group and with more and the words, and, and that was always a reminder to keep asking God for more, for him to work um, in my life and in our church. This year, about three months ago, I was like, God, gave, I was like, God what's, what's the word for two, 2019? And he gave me one, and then last month he gave me another word, so we're going to put them two together, which I believe is perfect for a healthy church, um, church body. The, the, the two words are this, deeper and wider. This is the first word, deeper, that he gave me, and then A month ago, he gave me wider. And some of you are like, I'm already there. All that good holiday food, I am wider than I want to be. So I'm already, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about your waist. I'm talking about this year, 2019. As your pastor, as someone who loves those who God keeps bringing here, and and that some of you keep coming back, which is great. My pastoral heart says, I want God and your walk with God to go deeper this year like never before. Deeper in your faith in God. And then wider is that your influence for God's kingdom will be expanded wider. That you will go deeper in your faith And be used by God and wider than maybe last this past year. So that's the challenge that we're gonna unpack today. So unpacking the deeper part first, there's a passage in Colossians chapter two that says this: just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thanksgiving. Now, if you're here today and you have yet to receive Christ Jesus as Lord, maybe 2019 is the year as God has drawn you to himself, you're on this journey, and maybe there will be something that takes place where it finally all comes together and you're not accepting religion, okay, we don't believe in religion around here, we believe in a relationship with God, and maybe you will receive him as your Lord and Savior, but then we don't want you to stop there. We've had a number of people trust in Jesus for, as a Savior in 2018, but we want you to continue then to live, right, in him and, and follow what he says, and that he's a part of every area of your life. But you have to be rooted and then built up in him. Those roots need to go down because when the storms of life hit, when you get that phone call that's rocked your world, when you face a crisis, Your faith, because it's rooted deep, will not evaporate, will not collapse because your faith went deeper. And then once it goes deeper, then you build upon it. 
And so that's, that's my challenge for, for you. It, it, maybe you're not a follower of Jesus, that you become a follower. But then you won't just, you know, have fire insurance. Oh, I don't have to, I'm not going to hell. Fire insurance, check. No, no, no. You have to continue then to live in him. Make sure that your faith is rooted and then built up in Jesus Christ. And I'm just teasing you with this verse because next Sunday we are starting a series in the book of Colossians. It's all about knowing Jesus Christ who he is, what he's done for us, and how he impacts our lives and relationships in everyday, in everyday life. And, and everything that we need is found in him. So if you're new to the faith or, not, or maybe you're just investigating Christianity, this next, starting next week would be a great deal because there's a lot of you know, crazy talk about who Jesus is and what he's done. We're going to look at that. And if, even if you've been walking with Jesus for a decade, the book of Colossians will challenge you to not only who he is, what he's done, but am I living for him, continuing to live for him? So I'm going to give you kind of a, a snapshot of, of teaching series that we're going to have from here to August in March. Um, I get away for a few days and then find out what God wants from September on. But here's what we're going to do. But the next series, after the Colossians series, I'm, I don't have a slide, I don't have a logo on purpose. I'm not going to tell you the name of it on purpose. It's just a two-week series. But here's what I wrote about that two-week series following this one. It will be one of the most important series you will not enjoy or want to hear. How is that for a teaser? Like, I'm gonna, no, no one's going to show up those two Sundays. No, I'm actually kind of, I'm playing on our, our sin nature. When you see a, a sign that says, wet, paint, don't. How many of you are like me? Like, uh, is it really wet? <laughs> oh, it is. But I'm serious. This two-week series following the book of Colossians series is not something I'm going to enjoy studying or even delivering. But it's one of the most important series that you probably won't enjoy or want to hear, but we need to hear. And after Easter, the series I follow in Easter is great. It's a Fixer Upper Life. God, how God can build, rebuild, or remodel your life, my life. And God is in the building and rebuilding and remodeling, uh, you know, kind of a God. And it's, it's going to be a great, great series, great series for, uh, for hopefully many that will come back following Easter to, to see what God, God, what God may want to do in my life. Then in June, here's the series for June. Don't mess with my grande, non-fat, vanilla latte faith. <laughs> Those are a bunch of coffee beans, by the way. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to mess with it because I want you to have a solid faith, an expanding faith, a deeper faith. Faith. I, I'm glad you're here, but I'm not satisfied with you warming that seat. I want your faith to go deeper, and I don't want you to have this kind of faith. Too many Christians have this kind of faith, and it's, it's weak. And then in the month of July, we're going to have a series called Filter, Unclogging My Worldview. Every single one of us have a worldview. Every single one of us have a world, world, world view. If you don't, you don't believe in Jesus, you have a worldview. If you do believe in Jesus, you have a worldview. And it's clogged. That filter that we filter life through and everything through, it's clogged by our culture, it's clogged by our past, it's clogged by our good and bad experiences, it's clogged by our, our opinions, we're going to take a look at a worldview unclogged. And then in the month of August, the series is, what would Jesus undo? Remember a few, year, a few years back, what would Jesus do? WWJD. No, we're going to do WWJU. Because what Jesus needs to do in our lives, and it's going to be very helpful for those who work with us and live with us, he needs to undo some things that we've allowed to occupy our life, and we're just kind of messing things up. So he's got to undo some things. Again, and I'll let you know in March when I'm going to get away for, from series for September on for the next year. But these are some ways on a Sunday morning 
for you to have a chance, an opportunity to go deeper in your walk with God, no matter where you are on a spiritual journey. Journey. There's another thing we want to do outside of Sunday morning. It's called fusion. And with that, I'd like to invite uh, Pastor Kevin to come back here because he's been spending uh, a lot of time working on this fusion where life and faith come together. I just saw you. Hey, how's it going? I'm doing all right. We got the email. We showed up. Well, like, actually, Barry, one of my New Year's resolutions is oh to my. just be more like you. So, uh, Thank you. How, how'd I do? I do all right? I get Thank it right? Thank you. You might want to do this then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is, well, uh, you might want to do this oh. a little. So uh, just see, we didn't have that last service. We We're just getting warmed up. We really didn't plan these yeah, shirts. It awesome. just kind of worked out that way. But. So, Kevin, you've been spending a lot of time uh, yourself and others. That was good. I like that. That was okay. funny. That was, that was funny. That's right, your next paycheck is on the line here, so <laughs> answer really good. <laughs> Hold on, all right, all right, I'm okay. good. Yeah, we're all, we're all set. <laughs> what does this whole fusion thing mean? What does it mean? So we've got this thing called life, right, where, you know, we, we come to church and we learn about God, and, and it's great, and, and in here our faith is increased, and then we walk out the doors and we do this thing called life. And sometimes there's this disconnect between what happens on Sunday morning and what happens out in, in real life. And sometimes what happens in real life doesn't necessarily match up with what series or what things we're going to on Sunday morning. And so fusion is this coming together of my faith and my life coming together in fusion. And we are taking three very specific areas, and we're going to, to go deeper. We're going to teach classes on that, and it's faith, family, and finances. And so our classes are really going to focus on those three areas. That's life. That's, yes. That's for all yes. about life. So those classes, what, what are we offering this first go around? So there's six classes that we're offering. And I'll tell you that the classes are, um, we've designed them uh, two ways. Uh, one, they're going to be shorter. So they're going to go six weeks or less. And they're going to be more exclusive, meaning that they're just not a, it's not a big y'all come when they're full they're full. Um, the, the first class we're doing is on Sunday night. It's called um, Emotional IQ Marriage. How many of you would love to know what your spouse is thinking? Don't raise your hand because oh, it'll sorry. get you. <laughs> Oops. I, I, I like, that question No, my spouse tells me what I'm supposed to think. I'm set. I don't need that class. Um, but there's this idea in marriage that, you know, we wish that our spouse knew what we were thinking, and it's a way for you to understand them better. It's Emotional IQ um, understanding all the, the, the feels that go into marriage, how that works, how God designed marriage. It's a really, really cool course. It's going to be on Sunday nights. On Wednesday nights, there's two classes that we're offering. The first one is called Love Like You've Never Been Hurt. Right? We just went through the holidays. Uh, some of you, this is a, a very fresh feeling that people, you know, um, we have sharp elbows and people offend us and we offend other people. And sometimes we cannot move past that hurt past that pain. Right. For some of us, we've been carrying this around since we were kids, and we still cannot move past that. This class, we're going to deal with that, deal, uh, talk about forgiveness, and how you can love like you've never been hurt. It really is possible. The other class we're offering on Wednesday nights is Faith Foundations. Whether you're brand new, I just began this relationship with Jesus, or for some of us, uh, you know, I remember at camp one time I raised my hand and I became a Christian, and then there's this big gap between then and now. I've been walking with Jesus for 10 or 15 years, but I don't really know anything uh, about my faith. This is the class that you want to take. Faith Foundations, we're going to go through and talk about the, the things that make faith faith. It's, got, it's a uh, really cool, exciting class. And then on Thursday nights, we have three classes that we're offering. Financial Peace University, excellent class. We've been doing that for a while here. If you're trying to get your financial house in order, this is the class that you want to take. Um, the other class we're offering is called Deeper Study, Deeper Faith. Bible, big book, some of us make this uh, New Year's resolution. I'm going to start reading through the Bible, and then we get somewhere around Leviticus and Numbers, and we go, yeah, not so much. Um, so how do you study the Bible? How can you right. be a self-feeder? And it's not a one-size-fits-all. There's several ways that you can study the Bible. Uh, that's a four-week class. You can sign up for that on Thursday nights. Then the last one is, and I'm, this one is unique uh, for us. It's called Toastmasters. Uh, one of the greatest fears that people have is public speaking. 
And it's not necessarily on a platform like this. It's just talking to another person. How do I communicate? Toastmasters uh, is a national organization. We're excited that we're going to start a club right here at Grace Point Church. Uh, So if you want to learn more about how to just talk to other people, whether it's at work, whether it's at home, whether it's out in the world, this is the class you want to sign up for. Marriage and family and faith, but also your finances, but even like the communication we can help you win at work, too, Absolutely. if you have a presentation to, to get some help. For sure. So there's, a, you know, that joke, long, t- long, it's often said joke is, oh, pastors, you only work one day a week. So why are we doing this? Because you're in your office bored, nothing to do, you know, you play Monopoly. Right. Thursdays were open for me, so I yeah. figured, you know, why not? Hey, let's just do <laughs> something. Uh, so seriously, why, why, are we, why are we doing this? When you walk into our lobby, you'll see on the wall our mission statement that says, helping people meet no and follow Jesus. And at Grace Point Church, we're we're not afraid to look at that and look at what we're doing and saying there's some ways that we're doing that really well and there's some ways that we need to improve. And this is an area that we need to improve. Helping people know Jesus, grow in their own personal one-on-one relationship with Christ to go broader. You know, Sunday morning, God does great things here, and we're, we are very grateful that, you know, that Barry's our communicator here, does a great job. Life groups, it's a great way to build community and to learn more about God from Sunday morning, but there's that other piece in life where I've got this, these areas in my life, and so we want to help people know Jesus deeper and in a different way, which is why we're offering these classes. That's great. That's awesome. Where can they find more information? GracePointKitsap.com. Info, gracepointkidsup.info. I would encourage you now, grab your phones, your tablets, actually pull it up. Here's the reason why. When the classes are full, they are full. And some of you, you're going, ooh, I want to sign up for that. I would encourage you, sign up for those classes. Now, we don't start until the week of January 20th. So we still have a, a few weeks to do that. But when I say that, some of you are going, oh, I've got time. And then you're going to forget about it. When the classes are full, the classes are full. So I would encourage you, if you want to sign up for these classes, get on there. And in fact, I was thinking about this last service. For some of you, if you want to sign up, I'm teaching the um, uh, Love Like You've Never Been Hurt. I will literally know when you sign up because I get an email. So if all of a sudden my phone rings, I'm like, oh, sweet, someone signed up. So no pressure. Uh, no, uh, no, no pressure. But um, sign up online, space is limited. And the, the last thing I want to tell you about that, and, and I mean this sincerely, if you sign up, please show up. Uh, because the classes are going to be full. And if you sign up and then you bail out and say, I'm not going to go, you are robbing someone else of an opportunity to get into one of these classes. So we want you to come. We want you to sign up. But signing up means I'm going to show up. And they're not forever. They're no, short, six, sweet, six weeks short, or sweet less. To the point. Six weeks or less. All right. Yep. Thank All right. You. Thanks. Thanks, Kevin. Nice shirt. Thank you. <laughs> There's this craze and a kind of a evolution going on in our, in our culture that a lot of people are jumping, jumping in on. It's called uh, DIY, right? Do it yourself. And you can take a class at Home Depot or Lowe's or somewhere else and then actually go home and do something instead of shelling out a lot of money for contractors. No offense to any contractors at Grace Point. But you could, you know, oh, I see this on Pinterest. I want this in my house. Oh, now I know how I can do it myself. I can make it. I just... T- it got rid of a too expensive alarm system in our house, and I, you know, DIY a home home security system for my house. Did it myself. Uh, years ago, I I wanted to, my wife asked me. <laughs> it's always dangerous when she says, "Honey, I've been thinking." <laughs> Cha-ching. Um, <clears throat> but this one was easy. She goes, "There's table that we have in the laundry room. Can you tile it?" Well, I, I never tiled before. I never tiled before. And so I, I bar- borrowed a, you know, a cutter from my friend Dave, and, and I went to um, YouTube, and I learned how to tile. And I was like, Gandy, I did that. And that started craziness in my house, because now I've, I tiled just recently our entire laundry room with real tile. And then in my bathroom, uh, master bathroom a couple years ago, we remodeled it and put in a huge walk-in shower, because I don't like showering like this, and it's all tile, but I learned how to do it. And I'm not saying this to, to brag, because a lot of you are doing, this, doing different projects. There's, there's a sense of accomplishment, like, I did that. That's the, that's the thought of these fusion classes and going deeper is 
don't just come here, sit, and think this is the only way you can grow spiritually. Because no matter what the church is and the communicator, you, can't, you won't grow the way God wants you to grow just coming and sitting. Go outside and then do things yourself. And we provide opportunities for you to, to grow deeper yourself. So go, go to that uh, website and, and check those out and, and get involved. That's one way outside of teaching series for you to go deeper. Then another way that I'm gonna challenge hundreds of us here at Grace Point, in the month of June, there's gonna be this thing called 21 Days of Prayer and Fasting. This is not a weight loss program, okay? Or I would start it this month, <laughs> all right? But it's 21 Days of Prayer and Fasting. And I'm gonna to put together a booklet, 21 Days booklet of read this passage, pray through these things, and fast something out of your life. The whole purpose is that you and I can see God in greater ways when we do this. So that's another way to go deeper with your faith. And then another opportunity for some of you in September is that we have an opportunity to take a team to India for a short-term mission trip. I've been to India many years ago. I want to go back. We want to bring a team from Grace Point. I want some of you to come with me. We're going to go to some untouchable areas, go into villages that many of them have never even heard the word Jesus. And if you're a follower of Jesus and you've been coming to church, you know, six months to a year, you're qualified. And we will train you how to share, um, you know, share and, and share Jesus to people who have never even heard of the word Jesus. If tell you, you want to go deeper in your faith, take a step of faith and go on a short-term missions trip. And uh, this is, we haven't done that in a while. It's, I'm excited for us to do this again. So we'll let you know more about that actually in a few weeks on Sunday mornings. So the second area, not only go deeper, but wider. Wider. Your influence for God to increase in 2009. Turn to Luke chapter 14, if you would. Luke chapter 14. In this passage that I'm going to read, you get a glimpse into the heart and passion of Jesus. And he wants his heart and passion to be our heart and passion. And the thing about Luke 14, the backstory is Jesus and his disciples, his you know, 12 best friends, are in a home of Pharisees. And the room is filled with Pharisees. That's, and right off the bat, that's awkward because the Pharisees didn't like Jesus. They didn't like him. They didn't like what he taught. And they, didn't, they did not like the crowds flocking to Jesus. But now Jesus and his, his disciples are in a home of Pharisees. And it's awkward. And early on, Jesus brings up a, 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 an issue that it made, they made a big deal of, but they didn't want to apply it the way they told others to apply it, and it was the issue of Sabbath. And they had this, like, we can't do anything on the Sabbath. No work at all. Don't get, get a sweat. You can't even walk very far. And made it all, they took what God gave as a helpful tool. They over-spiritualized it. And Jesus said this. If your child fell into a well, would you climb in and go after and get, get your child? Crickets. Because they couldn't answer the truth because they, their, their hypocrisy would be exposed. Then Jesus looked around the room at this banquet, this big table, and he noticed how people positioned themselves to be closer to the head of the table for political reasons. And he said this. If you guys ever have a lunch, do you, do you invite family and friends? And if there's a banquet, what you should do is invite sick people and crippled people and lame people. Crickets. Because they didn't hang, out, hang around with hurting people. And it was below them to really reach out to those people who had normal problems. And then the tension is broken by a guy. He couldn't handle it anymore. Verse 15, and when one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Meaning, can we just change the subject because it's awkward? Can we just change the subject and just let's talk about, so, oh, wouldn't it be nice to, in heaven, in the kingdom of God, we're all at the feast of God. Can we just please change the subject? Jesus replied, 
A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field and I must go see it. Please excuse me because I bought something with a lot of money and I never saw it firsthand. Like, really? Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. You're turning down a banquet with free food so you can go get dirty and sweaty and work the rest of the day. Right. Verse 20, still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. I'll let you fill in your own commentary. That may actually be the best excuse, all right? The servant came back and reported this to his master, and the owner of the house became angry and ordered the servants go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you have ordered has already been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, go out to the roads and the country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. This gives us a glimpse of the heart and passion of Jesus, that he wants his heart and passion to be our heart and passion. And the, thought, the thought is crazy that God extends an invitation to you and I to come to be in my family and join in my kingdom. That one day you'll be in heaven with me. And God invites us who are messed up. It doesn't make sense. But God's heart, his passion is that more people will come into his family and eventually be in his kingdom. And he says this to us, this is what Jesus is saying, go out quickly into the streets and the alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the lame, people with real problems. And go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. Compel them. Not just invite them, compel them. Jesus was encouraging us to compel people to come to him, to come into his family. And we experience this, we compel people all the time. You, you, you come across a new Netflix you know, a series and you like it and you compel others. You gotta go on Netflix, you gotta watch this, this is awesome. And we think nothing of it. And we, we, we go to a, a game, we go to a concert, and we, we just can't help ourselves. We are compelled to take pictures of us at the concert, and then we post it on Instagram and Facebook, basically saying, man, we're having a blast. You really should be here with us. You're missing out. When you see a movie, you're like, oh, man, this is really good. We compel others. Hey, you got to go see this movie. It's awesome. But when it comes to church, we're like, whoa, I can't do that. Really? Lifeway research says that a majority of unchurched Americans will attend a church service if someone they know invites them. A majority of unchurched Americans will attend church, a church service, if someone would invite them, would compel them to come. You got to come. This is awesome. And more people accept Christ in the church service than in any other venue. And here at Grace Point, we give people opportunities all through the year to meet Jesus as the Lord and Savior. And people get saved. So how many people will you invite to a church Sunday service in 2019? Now, we have a lot of cool community events, easy on-ramp opportunities, invite opportunities. Hey, come to Food Truck Sunday. It's awesome. And we compel them to come to that. Oh, we got this Christmas dessert theater. We compel people to come and visit. You're going to love it. It's awesome. And tree lighting, oh, my goodness. And thousands are invited and thousands come. This year, I want to push us even more. And that's great. Keep doing that. But I want to push us to this. In 2019... I will invite this many people per month to come 
to a Sunday morning service. This many people every month. Maybe the minimum, I'll, just, I'll invite one person a month. That's 12 people that you hadn't invited though. Maybe you want to do two or three. At, do the math. But it's more people that you will invite than if you don't try. You aim at nothing, you hit it every time. I want to challenge. Challenge every single one of us. God, use me, increase my influence for you and your kingdom in a wider sense in 2019 like never before. And we often underestimate what God wants to do in us. That's deeper. And we often underestimate what God wants to do through us. That's wider. Deeper, wider. Deeper, wider. As a church, uh, we're at a point where we need to go wider in our facilities. I'm going to give you a little sneak peek. In March, we're going to unveil Reach Part 2. What you see here, this big room, is this room right here in the lobby. That was Reach Phase 1 five years ago. We broke ground a little over five years ago and moved in a year or so later. And we needed it. We couldn't, we couldn't reach any more, more people. and People were leaving. Couldn't, couldn't find a spot. So we're enjoying this. But we, Phase 2, we did the most possible Phase 1. Phase 2 is we need to um, build a new nursery right there and a storage and workshop. Uh, first of all, the nursery, um, our current nursery is the, probably the farthest besides my office for mom, moms and dads and new parents to drop off their little ones. They got to walk down long hallways, several flights of stairs, and then up through here. We want the nursery right next to us. And then the storage, we, we, we took these two out for us to just get into this room, and we barely got in, and God got all the glory. Now it's time we need to go wider with our facilities. The, sec, the second, another part of phase two is, is new parking. We're here up, up behind us, up the hill. This will completely max out the number of parking stalls we can have on this, on this property, which will help us reach more people in all the things that we do, especially our big events. Um, that shuttle sometimes is cool and sometimes is not. So we have a bunch of new parking, which then we need a golf cart delivery service and ministry. <laughs> all right. So here's the thing. We're going to get just this, plant the seed. We'll unpack more in March and get more details and numbers and all that sort of stuff. But reach phase two will be paid with by cash. No loans by cash. If this is your church, may God begin to pr you pray and ask him, how can I help our church go wider so we can reach more people? So what I'm going to give us as we close five initiatives. I already talked about five initiatives for 2019. Now, initiatives is from the word initiative, which sees, up, sees something that needs to be done and do it. The, the plural part of that, the definition of initiatives is an opportunity to act. So here's five opportunities to act so to go deeper and wider uh, this year. The first one is take a, take a fusion class. Go on, find what it is. Hey, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to go that for those four weeks or five or six weeks. I think financial peace is a little longer, but I tell you, it will be worth it for your family and worth it for you. Take a fusion class. And then second, second of all is help us launch Reach phase two, that will take place in March. I'm doing these chronologically. Number three uh, initiative will be that 21 days of prayer and fasting. As we get there, I'll explain it all so you know what I'm talking about. That will take place in the month of June so that you can see and experience God more. Number four initiative, some of you need to come with me to India on a missions trip. And your, your faith will never be the same. Trust me. The number five initiative is a year-long, all-year-long Sunday service invite. How many people will you invite each month to come with you to a Sunday service so that they can meet, know, follow God? Maybe you have people who have walked away from church, invite them back to church. Hopefully, you are compelled to come, and you'll compel others to join you. 
this next year, the challenge is go deeper in your faith and go wider with your influence for the Lord and Savior that we have. Would you pray with me? God, you know what this next year is going to happen and what's going to be brought into our individual lives and homes and finances. And Lord, I pray that these words that you've given me, you've pressed upon my heart as I share them, that they would be accepted and, and the challenge received and more people go deeper and wider this, this coming year. Lord, I pray that you would increase the influence of this church in our county like never before, not for our glory, but for you and your kingdom. We pray that this would be a fantastic year in advance. We say thank you, and you get all the glory for this. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we say all these things. We say amen.